Hello everyone, this is Dal Stern. Welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm just gonna talk about my life through throughout my 30 years. It's just that I'm about to be 30 this year, this month actually, this week actually. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to go over some things that have been on my mind lately. And also, I just wanted to do some shopping and you know, just to you know, dedicate this video to my dad and his family because my dad's birthday is actually today and he's turning 56 already. Wow, he's old now. And unfortunately, you know, his sister had passed away five years ago on his birthday. Yeah, not a good way to pick your due date. <laughs> and yeah, I can't believe it's been five years since my aunt. Her name was Lucia. She died five years ago of breast cancer and diabetes and sadly that same year in October her daughter Suriana Suriana well depending how, how you say it though um, she also died of breast cancer and she was really young too she was my cousin she was like in her 30s 40s so she wasn't really that old and I don't know I just have a lot of feelings about it and I thought maybe I should share it with you guys just to remember my Aunt Lucia today. But also look back at my 30 years of life and what I've done so far in my entire life. And yeah, it's been very insane the last 30 years of my life. And a lot has definitely happened in my 20s that I didn't think would happen. But the reason why I also want to make this video is just to like maybe offer some advice to people who are in their 20s or maybe younger if you're watching this and you're like younger than 20 then I guess I could tell you that being in your 20s it's not really that easy I thought for sure in my 20s I would get married and have a boyfriend and have kids by now but unfortunately that wasn't the case for me it's just that um I just decided to pursue other opportunities and I ended up being on YouTube and because of this I have now gotten 200 subscribers well right now it's 203 but anyone could unsubscribe if they want <laughs> I'm just kidding please don't unsubscribe <laughs> but I'm gonna do some shopping and then talk about like offer my advice some good advice not bad advice it's important to shop around the holidays because that's when the prices are a little cheaper I know because when you shop on a regular random day it's a little expensive but check out all the Barbie collection here I'm not gonna watch the movie though but I really like the collection though wait so this is like I really want to get this hat, but I don't know. So this is $24.90. And this bag is $39.90. That's kind of pricey. And this one, I'm not sure. Oh, wait, here it is. I'm at Brea Mall in case you guys are wondering. This is $29.99. Yeah, I usually like going to Hot Topic because they usually have some cool random stuff here. This. It's a shadow highlight palette and it's uh, let me see, $17.90. And that, that's not the that thing, it has all these shades right here. Yeah, it looks really nice actually. I like this one, the purple one. I wasn't kidding when I said that the sales during the holidays, the prices go a little cheap and yikes. Very messy around here. Yeah, I figured since a lot of customers would buy some stuff for a cheaper price. Well, the bad news is Starbucks is closed. I came all this way for nothing at <laughs> all. Other than eye drops, because my eyes kind of having an allergic reaction. I did kind of overdo it with the shopping today. I had to buy this because I haven't seen it. any of these old Guerrero Pops for a while. Well, it's July 4th. Happy Independence Day, everybody. 
And I'm actually here at Huntington Beach. I just wanted to get a cupcake. I was going to get more than one, but my brother was really nice enough to buy cupcakes for the 4th of July. I think he's really excited about eating. Maybe that's why. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can't believe it's almost my birthday. 30 years old. Wow, that's, that's a big number. Not as big as 40 or 50 or 80. <laughs> So, an interesting thing about me is that when I was a baby, I was actually born with a cleft palate. Yeah, if you don't know what that is, it's like a, like when your mouth and your nose don't look normal and you can't swallow like you babies usually do. And having a cleft palate, honestly, it's really, it was really tough, but, um... You know, I managed to get by with my life. And my dad was really nice enough to be there for all my doctor's appointments throughout the years. And, yeah, it was a lot of doctor's appointments. We had to go through so many doctors. And because, like, when you have a club palate, you have to see a nose specialist, mouth specialist, plastic surgeon, and also speech, depending on how you talk, I guess, because... The doctor said I would never be able to talk, which was really hard knowing that because, like, you know, I'm talking to you guys now, and, um, yeah, it's kind of weird, but, you know, I managed to come a long way. Sometimes I slur my words. It's because of my club palate, but I just wanted to say it because, you know, I want people to, to know that even though you have a club palate, it doesn't mean that you're you're a freak it, it means that you're different and you know you shouldn't let other people stop you from doing what you want to do in your life and that's what I learned is that not everyone's gonna be able to hold your hand and be nice to you there are gonna be some people that are kind of mean but in a way it's kind of a learning experience because at the end of the day you all you have is yourself I really hope some of these people don't mind me walking and talking. But I'm gonna put some pictures on here just so, just to make it more interesting and not so boring. So, I actually had to get an eye specialist too, unfortunately, because I had a tumor on my right eye when I was a, a baby and I had it removed when I was um, four, seven, six, five years old. And it wasn't cancerous, luckily. But you could tell in my baby pictures that there was like a little pink bump in my eye, my right eye. I can't see through my right eye as good as... I never could, actually. But I think once I hit 18, or maybe 19, I had my last surgery in 2012 on, at, on spring. Yeah, it was spring season. And it was just basically just to fix anything that's left over on my face. I had over like 20 surgeries and it was a lot. Sometimes I keep forgetting that I had 20 surgeries. I don't know why that is though. It's kind of weird. As I was walking around, I saw this sign. I had to record it because I thought this was pretty cute. Just please do not vandalize this school because it's an elementary school. And I don't want kids to like come to school with a like a broken messy school. Yeah, no child deserves that. Anyway, so what was I talking about? I was talking about my, um, so yeah, it was kind of hard growing up as a kid. I had to deal with a lot of, not only bullies, but just some judgment outside of school. And it was kind of, it was hard, but, you know, unfortunately it, kind of carried on over to my adulthood in my 20s and you know I ended up getting a mental disorder which was kind of tough because uh, you know you would think someone like me would would be normal and have a fun life but it, that wasn't the case unfortunately you know I had to get I had to go through medical insurance and had to get a lot of surgeries for my cleft palate and my nose and my eyes although my eyes I think I might have to do another surgery because my right eye 
the vision just keeps getting worse and worse. Mostly because I go through my phone and my laptop. But yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm thinking about doing like eye surgery later in the future. Once I get more money, if I get more money. Really nice neighborhood. Just very quiet. I hope they don't mind me talking though. Yeah, I don't know if I'll get in trouble or on rec I'll get on record for this, but I mean, I guess I could say it because it's already written in my book, but I did release a book about my life. It's called The Dreamer Breaking Barriers and it has my real name on it. It talks about a lot of my life and what I had to go through and um, yeah, not only did I have to deal with bullying and going to doctor's appointments time after time after time, but I also had a phobia of doctors too. I got scared of doctors that they would refer me to other doctors, but it was just, it was hard. But then, you know, once I got to fifth grade, I, or maybe sixth grade, I just, I just wanted to let it be over now, all the surgeries and going to appointments. And when the music, and also because I was dealing with a, like I had this friend who I thought was a really close friend of mine, but she turned out to be a not so friendly person at the end. Like she kind of like turned against me, I guess. Kind of used me for her homework and hot Cheetos. And yeah, it's a lot. And you know, when you get bullied, it's hard. But when you get bullied by your best friend, who you consider the best friend, that just makes it even worse, in my opinion. And I think eventually, though, I found the strength to stop being so afraid of the doctors and just get all, all my procedures done as fast as I can. I think I just wanted to prove a point to her. I don't know. <laughs> and then I finally got braces in sixth grade and uh, but not only was I dealing with bowling, like I said, bowling and going to speech therapy. I also had to do spe a little bit of speech therapy during class time, like twice a week. But I eventually graduated in fifth grade with the speech therapy, that is. I didn't graduate elementary school. Oh, school. And yeah, it was long. It was kind of, it was fun, but it was kind of like easy. It's just, they just wanted me to learn how to talk appropriately better which I'm doing right now so I'm actually Mexican and I was actually born here in Anaheim California well not in Huntington Beach but in Anaheim and um, my parents were e they were illegal immigrants and but my mom got her papers all set my dad however he had a lot of trouble getting his papers even to this day like he still you know can't get his papers and unfortunately you know in 2017 um my father after passing the border multiple times my father unfortunately left like they took him home because they didn't want to give him another chance and so now and the worst part of it was that it was during Thanksgiving week in 2017. And it really, probably one of the worst Thanksgivings in my entire life without my father. It was the first Thanksgiving that we didn't, did not have my father around. And it was the worst, like the emotions that I had to deal with when I found out through my mom, it was on phone while I was working. Cause I was working when I found out. It was the worst experience of my life. Probably not, not the happiest. And to this day, when I think about it, I just get a little emotional, like still sad about it because it was, I usually don't break down at work unless it's like something really tragic in the family. And I think that was the second time because it was in 2017, Thanksgiving week. So, I, could, I get that you have to support my dad, but supporting my dad during Thanksgiving? No. Yeah, that is not. That's unforgivable. And it was really hard for my mom. I honestly thought me and my mom and, like, 
Personally, I thought we wouldn't make it without my father. But eventually, you know, we managed to get through without my father. And even though my mom works full time right now, um, she's doing the best that she can. I still live with her, but I have been thinking about moving out because I am thir turning 30 and I just want a lot more privacy and, you know, do a lot more for my channel. While my mom and my brothers, they were um, moving forward with their lives, trying to work hard and get by life without my father, because he he couldn't come back. Like, they ha they got rid of him and, and he, he went to Mexico. Um, I, I really got impacted so badly by his deportation. Like, I couldn't get my head straight. Like, I, I even thought about quitting college. Even though I had like two, three, four weeks left of college, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna quit. But I didn't quit. And I was already set to graduate anyway, but I did not quit. I'm just lucky and glad that I managed to do my graduation a semester early because they only did summer graduations and I was getting, I was gonna finish school in the winter. So luckily my dad managed to go to the summer one. I was smart though for doing that because had I decided to do it the next year, I think it would have been a lot harder. But um, yeah, I was, I was a mess after my dad got deported. Like I couldn't get, I couldn't think straight. I couldn't focus. I just wanted to give up on life. But I did not because, you know, I had a, I had brothers and my mom to take care of. I mean, I'm the oldest in the family, so. And yeah, a lot of things started coming out about my dad. About his debts. That he owed people money and yeah, all that private, personal stuff. And then in like December of 20... Ooh, look at those pigs. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Then December of 2017, I thought maybe by distracting myself, it would help cope with my dad's absence. And I started talking to this guy I met on Instagram, but real short, I'm just gonna talk about it real short because I honestly don't wanna make fun of him or be rude to him. But um, I thought he was really handsome when I first saw his picture and I messaged him and then he followed me back and I thought he was interested in me but unfortunately it was just like it wasn't working out like he had his own problems he was dealing with unfortunately at the time um, I ended up finding out later on that uh, his grandfather got shot and his parents weren't really like in his life that much. Like he didn't really have a father in his life. Which is kind of a trigger warning, a red flag. Like every person that I come, that I've been around with who does not have a father figure or doesn't have a like a stable family, like separated, divorced parents or left, their father left them when they were a kid. Yeah, those are the ones that are probably the biggest bullies, the not so good people you want to deal with. I've had a lot of people, unfortunately, like that, and they were not nice people. I was walking, <laughs> look what I found in the, right here, in the sewer area, I think that's what it's called, the canal. Someone left their toy over here. Yeah, I guess I'm not the only one with a birthday this week. Or maybe it's just saying, America, happy birthday. Because everyone's like, oh, happy birthday, America. So weird how people are making a big deal out of 4th of July this year than they were the previous year, so. Look how nice these roses are. So, yeah, I was talking about that guy. I don't want to mention his name, but. Um, yeah, we had a really bad fallout. I went to go see him live, but as I was saying about that guy, um, what happened? So I went to go see him perform live, because he plays guitar, 
And I thought we, we, we were okay. Like, it was a really fun day. And then the next day, you know, he kind of blocked me after I told him he did a pretty good job. And then all this messy stuff. And talking to him was like talking to a time, ticking time bomb, in my opinion. And then, you know, after I, I confronted him about it, he, he was trying to apologize. And yeah. I just felt really bad. Plus, I kind of felt like I had to be forced to apologize to him. Which I didn't like. You know, I think you should forgive someone on your own time. Not just because uh, someone's forcing you to do so. But I think in 2022, of December, while I was working, I saw on his Instagram, through his Insta story, that um, he posted a post that just kind of triggered not only me but it kind of got me feeling should I call the police like I'm not gonna say what it was but it was kind of scary and I think at that moment I kind of knew that I had to really forgive this guy like I can't hate him anymore because if the more I hate him the more it's just not gonna work out like I already have one grudge some grudges but it's always better to like let go of the some of the grudges especially if like this person is just suffering so much not just you but them as well because this guy um when ever since the whole thing that went down between me and him i've noticed that he keeps deleting all his posts from instagram like he posts new things and he deletes them all of them then he posts newer things, deletes all of them. And then there was this one song that really, like, he wrote about that really kind of got me feeling like, you know, I really think this guy's going through a really hard time. And I really shouldn't bully him. I mean, not bully. I really should stop hating on him now. And, um, but there was this song that goes by... And I'll keep it like PG because this is this is not a bad word channel <laughs> because I, re I honestly hate saying bad words because uh, what happened because in sixth grade I got bullied by my ex best friend and she used to say a lot of bad words about me and that's one of the reasons why I don't like to cuss online because of what happened and, and also because I think it's unprofessional and kind of rude in my opinion. Yeah, sorry about that. It's just that I was just walking to the park and I noticed that there was a guy in the car alone. I'm only going to be here for a little bit. I'm surprised there's like no one here, but oh well. Anyway, as I was saying, the song goes by. Um, he says something like, I whisper in her ear. I effing hate that voice. Always reminding me. So just remember, you are nothing. And all that stuff. And I was like, whoa, man. Don't you think you're kind of being a little hateful towards yourself? Like, it was a song about self-sabotaging. You know, like, self-hatred. And I was kind of like, this guy really hates himself a lot. And, you know, at that point, I was like, I need to forgive this guy. I think... Hating him is just not going to help anymore. And you know what happened to him in the past? His grandfather getting shot by someone and, you know, not having a father figure and stuff. Yeah, it's never easy. Oh, thank God there's some dogs here. Yeah, because I saw this car and it looked like he was talking to me, but... I don't know, maybe he's just talking on the phone with someone, probably. I should be okay. <laughs> I'm surprised there's like no kids out here. Especially because it's July 4th and everyone has the day off today. I really like the playground. But at that point, like I was saying about the guy, I just... As of now, you know, I forgive him. Because I, I just think he's going through a really rough time. He released this new, new music and I'm not gonna lie, I listened to it. It's way better than the other three songs he did but back then I think it came out during 2020 the pandemic but the new songs he just did it came out this year and I thought they were way better but 
when he posted it and kind of like tried to like self-market himself, he deleted everything again. And I'm just like, okay, man, there's literally something wrong with you. If you keep deleting, uploading, deleting, uploading stuff, there's literally something wrong. And it's kind of sad, to be honest. I kind of felt bad for him. And I know he probably doesn't doesn't want my sympathy or something, but I think at that point, there's, I think he might be going through some kind of mental illness. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I'm not licensed or anything. I did study psychology when I was in, in college. Yeah, I did study psychology, but I'm not licensed. And I don't know. I think he's going through some mental illness. It could be that what happened in his past must have affected him today. And, and I think he's like a year older than me. So I think he's like 31 right now. Or about to be 31 this year. I don't know. Yeah. But then there are some people that I just can never forgive. Especially that bully in 6th grade. Like, um... The bully in 6th grade, um... All I could say is that I found out that her father abandoned her when she was, uh... A baby, I think. Maybe younger. Because I remember when we used to hang out, she said she didn't have a dad. And then, like... When I told her things about my father, she said, I'm glad I don't have a dad. And then uh, I found out through one of her exes that um, she dated, I mean, she dated, that, yeah, I found out through one of her exes that she dated. Um, he told me that her, she, her father abandoned her and that he told, from what he told me, that what she told her to him is that, um, she felt kind of bad about it. She was like, why did my father abandon me? Kind of, It kind of seemed like that. And to this day, I mean, I kind of feel bad for her. But the way she treated me in elementary and not just elementary, but throughout elementary, junior high and high school. Yeah, it was a lot. Like, I remember running after school in junior high every single day just to get away from her because unfortunately she lived close by at the time but eventually she moved out thank god but it was really hard you know and I, I was lucky enough never to get a single class with her since since fifth grade like after fifth grade we never had a single class together until my my senior year um when i had that big schedule change and on my last period i i had her for a class and i just i got really scared like i didn't like i thought about ditching that class but i needed english to graduate so then after some i had to pull some strings and i eventually got out of that class thank god it took a, it was risky but i had to for my sanity because at the time I was very afraid of her like if you put me in a room with her we, it just it just will I will it literally have a mental breakdown if I were to be put in a room with her but as of now you know um I kind of like accepted it and just like moved on from it because like I can't let her like toy with me anymore and also like what she did like like hurting me and I almost got her suspended too because she kept on saying bad words like I said and you know I felt really bad about it at first but then later on I kind of got angry and thought why did she do that to me but I try not to let it affect me as much as I, it did back then but I mean it still kind of does a teeny bit but not as much as it did back then but the reason why I'm talking about it is because I know that bullying over the years has gotten worse since I've been bullied and um, not me but just to anyone in general you know you see all these um, online posts about kids taking uh, taking their own lives through TikTok and it's just really sad like I honestly hate that bullies just think that they could bully anyone on social media like they could be a racist they could be um very picky, perverted, weird, and just disgusting, and evil, and just, ugh. It's terrible, honestly. Being a, being bullied myself, it was awful. But I was bullied because of the way my, my face looked. Because my, my nose was, back then my nose used to be really flat. Like, it looked like someone, like, punched it really hard and all the bones, like, like, went missing somehow. And, um, my teeth weren't, were not that organized back then either. 
But eventually, because of all the doctor appointments and the surgeries I had, I eventually got repaired and stuff. But even though, you know, life is hard, you know, like, there are a lot of things other than just bullying that just, that happened in my life that I don't want to talk about yet because uh, I don't want it to not only affect me, not only does it talk about myself, but also like people around me. But um, life is hard, man. And when it does get hard, sometimes you just have to keep going. Even if you believe a little bit, that little bit can get you somewhere. That's a quote I've, I've created for myself. And it's, I think I put it in my book. I think you can see it on, my, on the last page. But I'll have the, the, the link on this description box below if you want to buy the book. I think it's like $5 right now. You can read it online if you want, but I think you could actually get a good a cover of it. But how did I cope with all that stress? Well, I started listening to music, and um, that's how I kind of got by with my life. Like, I re I'll never forget, there was a song that really changed my life, and that was Somewhere I Belong by Linkin Park. And when you read the lyrics of that song, it kind of, like, it was one of those songs that really, like, kind of points out what I was going through and, and you know, where I belong, like, where do I belong? Because at the time, real quickly, um, I was sent to special school when I was a kid and because they thought I wouldn't be able to talk, but then they immediately sent me to public school. And when I went to public school, they had a handicap uh, program. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but the special ed kids. And um, I remember seeing them and they looked a lot like me, you know, my face was weird at the time. And, but the only difference is that I could walk and talk and do everything. But being in public school was kind of hard because, you know, all the bullying, all the constant staring, glaring from all the regular kids. Well, all the handicap, well, all the special kids, like, they're pretty much like in a special program. I thought maybe I should have joined them. But I mean, the problem was that my, I think my brain development was a little more, I don't want to say advanced, that's kind of messed up, but um, a little higher, I guess, than them because they weren't, I guess they were just like, you know, they had a hard time thinking and, which I get it, you know, it's hard to think. Sorry about that, about the fire truck. <laughs> oh God. But I felt really bad. Like there was this one handicap. I will say, special ed kid. Why do I keep saying handicap? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But there was this one special ed kid that really affected like the way I felt about about the special ed kids. Her name was Lupita and she had Down syndrome. And um, she lived, actually, she actually lived in the same apartment complex as I did back then when I was in elementary school. And the reason why I want to talk about her is because I don't know if she's still alive. The sad part about Lupita's life is that um, when she was born, her father didn't want her, so she he pretty much bailed on her. And she was kind of, Lupita, she kind of sounded like a, like she made these noises that kind of reminded me of a cow a little bit, but in a good way, not in a bad way, like, oh, yeah. I hope this doesn't sound offensive to anyone, but... Um, yeah, so Lupita was raised by a single mom, and then, like, after we, we graduated from elementary, a couple months later, my mom told me that uh, Lupita's mom died unexpectedly, and I was like, what's going to happen to Lupita? And she said, I don't know. I mean, her father doesn't want her, and her mom's gone. And I was very shocked because Lupita, she was just very fragile, like... I don't know, like she just, the fact that her mom died unexpectedly, it was, it was hard. Probably for her, and I don't know where she is now. I don't know if she's still alive, or maybe she's with other family members, or... But I hope that she's okay wherever she is. I just want to talk about her because, like, it's just a really sad story because it's... You know, she kind of reminds me of myself a little bit because of what I... My appearance and... What I could have went through had I not been able to talk, you know, like the fact that the doctors told me I would never be able to talk, that's kind of a lot. 
And, you know, I could have been with the special ed kids, but I wasn't. I was put in the regular kids, and unfortunately, you know, I got bullied and glared at and ridiculed by everyone, segregated because my face was different and not so good looking. Which is the reason why I don't, like, have my face in public. Like, I don't put my face in the videos because, you know, I'm very camera shy and I'm also kind of very, like, very judgmental on myself. A little bit, not so much, but I just don't look good in shape. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I mean, I still feel a little bit better than I did back then, but I, I'm just out of shape. That's all I'm going to say. But anyway, in my 20s, I went to community college at Cyprus because um, I, I thought about going to university. Heck, I was even eligible to go to university, but just, I decided not to because I had a really bad experience in high school. Sorry, I thought I heard something. Anyway, um... I had a really bad time in high school. I had a lot of mental issues that I was struggling with. And then in college, I wanted to go to community college just to find myself. And unfortunately, you know, all the, all the past and awful memories that happened in high school followed me over to college. And, you know, I had a hard time letting go of the past of high school for a while. And Unfortunately, it affected my grades a lot really bad because I used to have really good grades in high school and junior high But when I was really at my lowest, I just I couldn't do really good in school and But luckily, you know, I managed to go to Cal State Long Beach after four years of going to community college And you know, I, I honestly recommend going to community college than go to university straight after high school because I feel like with community college you you get more options of not only learning, but only learning different types of things. Like, I remember when I went to community college, they wanted me to do a political class. And I'm just like, <laughs> no, me and polit politics, we're not BFFs. And, you know, they wanted me to do other things because there's like a requirement sheet you have to do in order to go to university if you want to transfer. And I remember taking music classes and then child development classes and um, the gym classes. There was a gym class I took. It was just mostly gym, you know, just go to the the gym equipment and all that stuff. And that's where I got my my interest in music. Like, my interest in music that definitely started to expand when I started taking these music classes. And, you know, um, psychology was also kind of helping me wanting to be a counselor or hopefully a psychologist someday in life. And And then I took a computer graphics class, too after I t taken one in my senior year, it was a really fun class. The problem was Photoshop and all those programs are so expensive and they, they take up a lot of memory on your computer. That's the sad part. But um, yeah, I, 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 even though I kind of failed in community college pretty badly, like I barely passed, I think it really helped me learn more about myself and what kinds of things I want to do in my life. And also the ideas that I put out on YouTube was because of all the, all, was inspired because of community college. You know, the music stuff, the, the art stuff, the abandonings, all that stuff, photography. Well, photography, I took it in high school actually, but it was kind of an inspirational class. The writing, the stories and everything. And then I went to Cal State Long Beach, and um, since then I went to the University of Cal State Long Beach. Unfortunately, I had to change my major because the they told me that the psychology department they're really competitive over there. And going to Cal State Long Beach, like it was a it was a lot. Like I remember the, the counselors would tell me that sorry, but you're not going to be able to go to Cal State Long Beach. Your grades are not good, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember applying for Cal State Long Beach the first time. I got rejected. <laughs> I think it's because I applied for the um, for the spring semester. I was trying to get in spring, but getting into the spring semester is hard. That's why they recommend taking the fall because it's a lot easier and there's more. I guess there's more open availability. But I remember when I got accepted in Cal State. I mean, rejected the first time. It was. It was the worst feeling ever. <laughs> and I, I thought about giving up everything, too. I was like, you know what? I give up. 
but then I got back on my feet, and then surprisingly, I got in the the second time, and you know, I was really happy because like, not only did I get in the top universities of California that I knew at the time, but also that it was an easy access to take the bus from there. You know, just one bus, and not just that too, but the fact that I proved to the counselors and stuff that I that I can go in Cal State. Even though they've told me you can't go to Cal State with the grades you have, I managed to. And it kind of proves that you could prove people wrong. And I've done it many times too. I've proved people that I, I could talk. I've proved people that I'm very um, outspoken, especially because of YouTube. I'm, well, not too outspoken. You know what I mean, right? And, you know, I managed to prove once again that I could... I graduated from Cal that I graduated from community college and transferred to Cal State Long Beach. And just recently this year, which is why I wanted to make this video, I failed um I I had a lot of trouble with uh, a, a a thing. I don't know if I could say this because um I don't know if they could sue me for this, but nine years ago I failed the test and I had to go through a process. Like I had to retake the written test and then go to interviews year after year, go to the doctors and send in uh, medical information, medical reports, eye doctors for medical reports for so long. And then I had, and it was awful. Like I wouldn't, first off, I'll, I'll just say this. When you're taking your driver's license, and you're taking your behind the wheel, make sure you check on the DMV reviews first before taking the, the behind the wheel. Because you've got to make sure that you don't take your test in a location where they're for sure going to fail you. Like that, what, like what happened to me too. And you know, nine years later, after a lot of hard work, a lot of calls, a lot of tests, a lot of medical evaluations, medical reports, all that other stuff, after years and years of years of pulling it in, having really awful bad phone calls with the employees, telling me to just give up or just and then having having been told to just live your life without a car, I finally man I, after nine years, I finally managed to at least get what I what I what I've been working for, fighting for. And I can't really describe the details because, again, I don't want to get sued by them and I don't know if it's okay if I could talk about it on YouTube, but nine years later, I managed to beat them and they threw my case. And now I'm giving another opportunity to prove that I really can be a safe driver. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is because, you know, I accomplished, I accomplished a lot, but I couldn't do it without um, my family and my friends and everything that has helped me in between, you know, music in general and, and just, you know, every kind of support I got in my life. I honestly just wanted to talk about it because like, I feel like people nowadays, there's a lot of sadness and hate in the world today that where we live in and, and there's a lot of racism and it just really gets annoying to the point where you're just like, well, what could I do? But the fact that I have 200 subscribers right now proves that I can really like make people inspired. Like that's what I wanted to work for, inspire people and have them have hope so they can live a long lasting, happy life. Because that's what everyone deserves, a happy, good life. I deserve it too. You deserve it too. Because after so many so many bad things happened to me, and there's a lot more that I would talk about, but again, I don't know if that's it's good enough for the channel or safe enough for the channel for YouTube rules. But the fact that I a, a, a Mexican girl who had immigrant parents, who was born with a cleft palate, dealt with bullying at home, mostly at school, it was really bad at school, had to go to speech therapy, 
And then after went through mental challenges in high school and had to deal with so many high school problems like no normal person should deal with. It's a lot worse nowadays than it was back then. And then going to community college, being told that you can never go to Cal State with the grades you have. And then, and then finishing up 20 surgeries, over 20 surgeries, failing your driving test the first time and going through a really rough process that takes nine years, only to then get your case thrown and finally get, get your chance to prove that you are a safe driver. And graduated from Cal State Long Beach. Like, that is... And now having 200 subscribers, like, that is a lot for me. <laughs> it is a lot for me, because I never, personally, I never thought I would, I would succeed in life. I always thought maybe I was going to have a baby and just, you know, live the normal stereotyped that people say about Mexican women that they're weak, that they don't, they're good enough for babies, which is not true. And you know, I have never been married. I've never had a date with anyone, but I did graduate from Cal State Long Beach. And time and time again, I've proven that I can do a lot more. I just need to put my heart into it. I know it's cheesy, but it's true though. Which is why I wanted to release this video because I wanted to hopefully inspire people. And you know, I may not be a counselor, or a social worker or a psychologist like I had hoped for and dreamed of but I hope someday down the line I can help people and hopefully that's the career that I hope I could like achieve in and maybe get paid along the way that'd be nice it doesn't matter the amount as long as you know I get a career but that's what I want to do in my life. I want to inspire people and help people and entertain people, but also make them feel better about themselves. And I understand life sucks and it's so hard. Like, it is frustratingly hard. Like, every day I deal with that all the time. But you can make it. You really can. You just got to believe in yourself. Even if it's a little bit, that little bit can get you further down the line or something like that. I don't know how I said it, but I said something like that. But yeah, also, I wanted to promote my book too, which I released like two years ago, I think. It is available on Amazon though, so I'll have the link down below. So I'm telling you guys this because, you know, I just, I've seen a lot of negativity behind, you know, YouTube, you know, the whole thing that's been going on. I know what people are going through, it's hard. It really is hard. But you really can do good things in your life. Even when, you're, when your life is so hard and just... It, it seems like it's never gonna go somewhere. It really can get somewhere. You just gotta believe in yourself a little bit more. I mean, yeah, you don't know how many times I've given up so, every single day. I've given up almost every day, I think. But I never... I kept going and... I succeeded, well, I didn't succeed fully, but I did kind of succeed in. And it took nine years to get my rights back, which is the best thing, the best present I ever got in my birthday, was to have that case thrown and just, you know, prove once again that I can be a safe driver. And I know I could do it this time because I've been through way more worse things in my life. And, you know, I hope, I hope this time it works out. That's all I'm going to say. I would say more about the situation, but again, I don't want them to go through my videos and be like, oh, we can't, we got to take this away from her. We can't let her do this. Just in case. But, yeah, I think I'm going to go get that Starbucks. I deserve it after a long walk. Very long walk. Yeah, after talking about it so seriously, <laughs> I just wanted to say, you know, take care of your mental health, you know, and I'll do the same too as well. You know, there's been a lot of people who unfortunately have taken their own lives and it's just, it's very sad. But thank you guys so much for watching my channel and thank you guys for over 200 subscribers. 
It may not be a million or 10 million, but I'm really happy that you guys gave me a chance to to let me speak on in your lives and hopefully make some good memories along the way. I have I have a really I've been having a really great time doing a lot of things, you know, going to Disneyland and may, this month I'm going to go to somewhere to celebrate the 200 subscribers and and I could have done this, I could have not done this without you guys. But thank you so much. And you know, I'm going to be 30 and yeah, it's not a good thing cuz I'm getting old. But 30 years old. Wow, if I accomplished a lot in my 20s. I wonder how much I could accomplish in my 30s. I hope I could accomplish more things, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you guys for subscribing and watching the video. And comment, like, subscribe if you want. Take care of yourselves and take care of the people you love. And always remember who you really are. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.